So very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. So after uh, probably I think uh, uh, one or two weeks, I'm joining uh, you with the classes. I thank the Lord for giving us uh, an opportunity. So today we're going to see a small story in the Old Testament and see what lessons we have from it. So we have studied in how to study the Bible about the type and the anti-type, <clears throat> all the things which are written in the Old Testament uh, were all uh, just a shadow of the four things uh, that are supposed to come uh, in the New Testament or after Christ. Therefore, we see and we have uh, studied uh, in last uh, few weeks also about the tabernacle and other uh, things which are mentioned in the Old Testament, that all things uh, signify Christ and the church. So, <clears throat> let us read one verse in Colossians 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Joel, brother, can you read Colossians 2, 16 and 17? <clears throat> Let no man therefore judge by you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath mm. days which mm. are shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. Oh, very good, brother. So, what the body is of... Uh, Christ. So, all the things which are uh, mentioned in the Old Testament, the rituals, the holy day, so doing this, uh, the, that, all those things, what does the Bible say? It says, it's a shadow of things to come. It was just a shadow of the things that is to come, but the body is of Christ. That means uh, everything is fulfilled uh, in the body of Christ. That means the church and uh, Christ, uh, and it typically it is fulfilled. Uh. Okay. And uh, Romans Apostle Paul also tells uh, that all things are written in the Old Testament were written for our edifying. Let us read Romans 15.4. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Romans 15.4? For <clears throat> whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we do uh, through patient and comfort of the scripture might have hope. See, all things are written of our time were written for our uh, uh, learning. Uh, you see, for our learning. That means each and everything in the Old Testament has a lesson for us. Why? That uh, we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We might have hope and uh, there might be a very footage for our hope also. So that is the reason the Old Testament things and all are given. So today we will see a small story that happened in the Old Testament in the life of Naaman. So who is Naaman? If you see, you must have heard this uh, story uh, since your childhood probably. Uh, when you have been going to Sunday class, so if you are going to the churches and all. So usually they take this uh, story for uh, children to increase them to have faith in the Lord. Okay. So Naaman, if you see, Naaman was actually a captain of the, you see, the Syrian army. Now, who are the Syrians? We know very well the Syrians uh, were uh, actually the enemies of Israel. And uh, usually they used to have a lot of war between Israel and Syria. And they used to come and attack and take the people, people captivity. So, and... Uh, this uh, captain, Naaman, was a very valiant uh, warrior. He was a mighty man. He was a good uh, captain. And because of him, the Syrian army had won a lot of wars. So there was honor and dignity for this uh, man called as Naaman. So let us read 2 Kings 5.1. 2 Kings 5.1. Uh, Sunita, sister, can you read? Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leaper. He had everything. He had uh, dignity, honor, respect, everything. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says that, uh, but he was a leper. So he was infected uh, with the leprosy. Though he had everything because of him, there are a lot of wars that are won 
by the Syrian army, but he was infected with the leprosy. See, leprosy had uh, totally marred his life. You see, it has stolen the joy and happiness of his family. Why? Because if you see, leprosy during those days uh, was actually a contagious uh, disease which was incurable and there was no remedy or treatment for uh, this leprosy at all. So when leprosy comes, usually slowly start eating the body, slowly start eating the bones, the flesh, everything. And uh, though they would be alive, slowly the body would get uh, totally deformed. You see? And uh, uh, this would totally spoil their, uh, you see, the beauty, you see, and they would lose everything. Uh, and nobody would even dare to come to near to the leprous person because there was a very easily spread uh, disease. So the people were very, very cautious. And not only that one, this leprosy was so that uh, once if the some part of the body is infected with leprosy, it will spread to the entire body. And uh, the part that is infected with leprosy, even if you take a pin and pierce it or punch it or put hot water also, you, there's no sense in that uh, uh, part at all. So that was the case of uh, leprosy, you see. And, uh, you know, uh, we know that very well during the days of the Lord Jesus Christ and during the days of Israel, God had commanded that each and every leper was supposed to be outside uh, the city of Jerusalem. He was not allowed to be inside uh, Jerusalem. He was supposed to live only outside of uh, the city of uh, Jerusalem. You see? So, uh, it uh, applied to uh, any leprosy, though be in uh, any, uh, you see, country or place. Every leper was isolated from their home. So, if you see, Naaman, similarly, had uh, come and invaded uh, Israel once. And while invading uh, Israel, you see, he defeated the Israel and took the people captivity to the place of Syria. And uh, during the captivity, he had taken a small girl, you see, captivity uh, to his place. And she was working as a maid servant in Naaman's house. And uh, she saw the, you see, the difficulty of uh, uh, Naman's family, their sorrow, you see. <clears throat> and uh, she began to, you see, witness about the one true God. She could not uh, tolerate, uh, she could not see them suffering. So she, you see, went and told uh, about uh, the Israel God, the God of Israel, who has power to heal all the diseases, to Naman's wife. Read verse uh, 2 and 3. Uh, verse 2 and 3. Uh, Romy, sister, can you read? And the Syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away cap captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Very good. Now, was three sister, huh? And she said unto the mistress, Would God may Lord were with the prophet that is in uh, Samaria, for he would recover him for his leprosy. See, she told uh, about uh, the God of Israel and she also told that there is a prophet, uh, you see, in Israel, if uh, our master would have been in Israel, you see, and the prophet uh, would have definitely healed, uh, you see, Naman of his uh, entire uh, disease. See, <clears throat> and uh, as soon as uh, Naman uh, hears this one, so, really, guess uh, some hope that uh, if I go to Israel, uh, he says, surely I can be cured. So, immediately, Naaman comes to the king and shares this news uh, that uh, there is a prophet in Israel. So, who will heal uh, this uh, leprosy? So, immediately, the king of Syria, he was very happy that uh, his mighty 
the sea captain would be healed. And he, he took a letter and wrote a letter to the king of Israel and uh, told him to heal Naaman of his disease and send him back to, you see, Syria. Read verse 5. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Mm. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And mm -hmm. he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Very good. Ten changes of raiment. <coughs> so all these things. Uh, Naman took uh, immediately went to Israel and directly came to the palace uh, of the king. Immediately when he came to the king's palace, he took the letter and gave it to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel, you see, as soon as he read this letter, he was totally shocked. You see, because in that letter, uh, it had written that, uh, you please heal Naman of leprosy and that he may recover and you see, and send him back uh, and as soon as uh, the king of Israel read the, this letter, you see, he began to tear his cloth, you see, and he began to wail uh, and tell, uh, see, uh, the king of Syria is uh, seeking an excuse uh, to attack uh, Israel. Because those days, leprosy was incurable. It, uh, nobody had any cure at all, you see, though it be in Israel or any other place. And suddenly when he sends his letter to uh, cure uh, leprosy. How is it possible? Uh, you see, then uh, see what happens. Uh, verse 7. Uh, Amar brother, can you read verse 7? And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he, that he rent his clothes and said, I am uh, am I God to kill to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Where, um, wherefore consider I pray you and uh, and see how he seek a quarrel against me. You see? So he told, uh, see, how he is seeking opportunity to fight against Israel. No, this news began to spread in Israel. And Naaman had come to, uh, you see, the king's court, uh, seeking the healing of leprosy. And uh, uh, they also heard the condition of king, uh, how he tore his clothes and uh, he was in very distressful condition. Immediately, this news comes to Elisha, the man of God. Elisha tells uh, to the king, O king, why are you worried? Why should you rent your clothes and be much worried? Send him to me. I will heal him of his leprosy. That he may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God's prophet in Israel. And uh, immediately, you see what happens. Uh, the king uh, sends uh, a Naman, uh, you see, to uh, Elisha's uh, place. Then what happens? Uh, Elisha... You see, uh, house was sought by Naman. Naman rode the chariots and came to the house of Elisha. Read verse uh, 8 and 9. Verse uh, 8 uh, and 9. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read verse 8 and 9? Second Kings, right brother? Yes brother, Second Kings, 5th chapter 8 and 9 brother. Okay. And it was so when Elisa, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and he stood at the door of the house of Elisa. Hmm. He came directly to the house of Elisha. Then as he, he came, he expected that, that uh, there would be a red carpet uh, welcoming. You see, everybody, even the soldiers and all, will be waiting uh, to welcome Naman. But nothing happened. 
So immediately they went to the house of uh, Elisha. It was a very narrow place. You see, he knocked the door. Immediately, the servant of uh, Elisha opened the door and said, Go and dip in uh, River Jordan seven times and you shall be cleansed of your leprosy. <laughs> immediately, Naaman was very angry. He never expected uh, such a uh, rude or, uh, you see, a very low behavior uh, from the prophet uh, like uh, Elisha. Read verse 10. Uh, verse 10. Muna sister, can you read verse 10? <clears throat> and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And thou shalt be clean. So as soon as his head is one, Naaman turned right about turn, took his chariots and began to ride towards her. She was very angry. You see, when he was uh, very angry, he was going with the chariots and all, slowly so many thoughts began to come to his mind, wondering why Elisha the prophet, if he is the true prophet, if he is the prophet of the one true God, why is he not in the king's palace? And uh, he should be honored and uh, he, should, he should be sitting next to the king. And uh, why did not king uh, welcome us? Uh, neither were our gifts or uh, rewards were uh, uh, received or respected. And uh, when he went to Elisha's place, it was a very narrow place, a very small house. And the servants also were never uh, uh, wearing grand dresses and all. And uh, he expected that at least uh, you know, Elisha would tell something big to do, offer so many sacrifices, give so much of offerings. But nothing uh, such uh, happened. So he began to wonder whether that girl had cheated him, that she, she told the lies or something like that. Then, as he was uh, wondering <clears throat> and pondering about uh, this thing, his soldiers, they also saw his... Uh, condition. And uh, they came and told, Master, why are you so much worried? If uh, Elisha would have told you to do some great things, he'll offer uh, 50 rams and 50 bullocks, uh, you wouldn't have done it. You would have done it. You see, if you'd have told to do some great, great things, very expensive sacrifices or give him some costly gift, you would have done it. But uh, just think, uh, Elisha has never said any of those things. Neither did he desire any of a gift. Neither did he ask any of a gift. But he has told a very simple thing. That is to go and wash in Jordan seven times. So, why didn't we do it? He told. You see? And that was a very turning point for Nama. Read verse 13. Uh, verse 13. Uh, Joel brother, can you read verse 13? And his, and his servants come to near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great things, thing, wouldness thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Yeah, wash and be clean. So, you see, Naman was a soldier. You see, a captain. So, he decided to test uh, what uh, the prophet has said, whether it would come true or not. So, while they were passing uh, to Syria, they had to cross uh, River Jordan. You see, and that is the time that uh, Naaman uh, got on from the chariot uh, and uh, he went and dipped, uh, you see, in River Jordan. What happened? Verse 14. Verse uh, 14. Anil Budar, can you read verse 14? <clears throat> verse 14 then went he da down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of the man of God and his and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean See, as he dipped and came out his flesh became like a little child it seems so you know, sir, little like very cute, and very soft, and he was totally <clears throat> cleansed of his leprosy. How many times did Naman dip? 
seven times. Imagine the first time would have taken a dip, nothing would have happened. You see, again it took a second time, nothing, not even a fraction of changes. You see, third time it dipped, but even then, not even little bit changes also. You see, huh? again the fourth time, nothing wonder happened. You see, not even a bit uh, of uh, changes also, not even light sign of uh, cure, cure of leprosy. Imagine if we were in that condition, what we would have done? We would have ran from that place. Uh, your four times nothing has happened. And what will happen in another three times? Uh, you see, imagine if you have any uh, cold, cough, or sickness. If the doctor, tell, uh, doctor tells us to take medicine for five days, what will we do? What would we expect? Uh, we expect that at least in the first day, some 10% reduction will there. Second day, some reduction. Third day, something. Fourth day, at least everything should go off. But if something doesn't happen, immediately we will go in search for another doctor. But Naman, here, yeah, he did not do so. He was a soldier, an army person. Once he has decided to dip, he dipped completely the seven times. You see, Fifth time also nothing happened. Sixth time also nothing happened. Imagine the condition. At least sixth time something should have happened. Entire soldiers, you see, they are all seeing nothing happened. But when he dipped the seventh time, everybody was surprised that he was totally cured of leprosy. His leprosy was no more at all. There was no traces also. Entire thing was cleansed. His body, the Bible says, was like a newborn child. Imagine, huh? our chokri, huh? our soft cheese. You see, just touch our skin. It will be so soft. Huh? Naman became like that only seems. Uh, imagine, so joy, so happy. Naman would have been that uh, immediately he returned to the man of God, Elisha's house, and he thanked him and he thanked the God of Israel. And he said, in future, I will worship only the God of Israel and it offered a lot of gifts and rewards to Elisha. But Elisha did not take anything. Let us read 1st King, 2nd Kings 5.15. 2nd Kings 5.15. Gopal brother, can you read? 2nd Kings 5.15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessings of thy servant. See, I pray thee, take a blessings of thy servant. Uh, imagine, so joy, so happy, he would have returned to his family. What a Naman done to that girl, to that maid? He would have thanked her very, very much. Uh, you see, he would be so grateful for that uh, small, uh, you see, child. Imagine that child, uh, see the character of her. She is witnessing about one true God to the enemy who has destroyed her own family, you see, and brought her captivity and made her to work like a slave in her house. We imagine we would do that one. We would uh, work like a, uh, you see, servant. If you are working like a servant in our enemy's nation, if something bad happens to them, we will thank God. Oh, God has heard my prayers. But here, she witnessed about the true God. And Naman would have come and, you see, surely he would have rewarded her plentifully and he would have set her free and he would have made her to come and join Huh? her family. You see, now, this is the story. The seven dippings of Naman in River Jordan. So, what does this, uh, you see, seven dippings of Naman, you see, signify? You see, so, leprosy, what does leprosy mean in the Bible? You see, first of all, some people misunderstand this one, the thing that, oh, we should baptize seven times. Okay? This one, Naman, has got nothing to do with baptism. We'll see about baptism subject in the coming days. You see, leprosy. What does leprosy signify in the Bible? Leprosy signifies sin. You see, once the leprosy comes, there's no cure for it, no remedy at all. 
It spoils the body completely. It eats the body. You see, the image, the beautiful image spoiled. So similarly, when sin entered into the world, death came upon mankind. Man fell from the glory of God. He lost the, the image of God in which he was created. He was totally deformed. Sin began to consume him and death reigned upon him. You see, the mankind was completely destroyed. He could never walk perfectly or be healthy. You see, or stand perfect before God. You see, has leprosy when it comes, uh, you see, even if you pinch or even if you pour hot water also, there is no senses on the skin. So similarly, when the sin comes, when you are, sin is deeply rooted into us, even our conscience doesn't work. You see, there are so many people in this world, conscience itself is not there. They tell lies like as if hitting on their head. You see, boldly they tell lies. Uh, you see, the basic thing, uh, and many Christians also, oh, they are very fond of telling lies. You see, huh? because sin is uh, entrenched into their body. Their, their skin, their conscience has become so thick that the word of God doesn't work at all. You see, they began to speak lies. There's no senses. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing will work out. Uh, even if you touch, you, if you pierce with uh, God's word, you pour hot water, nothing will happen. That is the sin. Uh, you see, and these uh, sinful people can never come close to God. They are isolated. They are far from God. You see, and uh, uh, what is the remedy? You see, God uh, created Adam, you see, and gave him the entire dominion of this earth and told him, you see, have uh, uh, dominion of this uh, earth, rule over the fowl of the air, over the beast of this uh, forest, you see, and uh, fishes in the sea, the entire thing God uh, had given him. You see, the entire earth, he was a king of this earth. But God told him, huh, you shall not eat the fruit of uh, good and evil. In the day you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen? Uh, you see, sin and sin and this result, death will result to you. But uh, we know the story very well. You see, the Satan cleverly deceived uh, Eve, you see, to eat uh, the forbidden fruit. But once, uh, you see, the forbidden fruit happened, uh, was ate, uh, and Adam ate, sin and death entered into this world. So, if we need to be cleansed of this sin, you see, then what we need to do is that we need to take the seven steps, dear brethren. So, each and every step is very, very important. And what does seven mean in the Bible? Seven always means a complete number. Therefore, you see, Seven creative days, seven years you need to work and take rest. Seven churches, seven trumpets, seven angels, seven plagues, seven colors in the rainbow, seven weeks in a day. So seven, seven, seven always is a perfect number. It appears in the Bible more than 400 times. So what is the first step? The first dipping signifies faith. This is the basic, you see, structure each and every Christian should have. The faith, faith on the Lord. You see, faith on the Lord, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, we should have faith that all our sins will be cleansed by our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died for our sins. And for this one, a person should believe that he is a sinner. You see, and he has no way to escape from this sin and death except the God of Israel. So travel there. You see, have faith. You see, Jesus tells about Naaman. No? There are so many lepers in Israel and in Syria, but only why Naaman was healed? Because of his faith. So similarly, a Christian, a basic step is that he should believe that he is a sinner and confess his sin. You see, that is the first step, dear brethren, having faith. You see, once if you have faith, next only you can come to the second step. Therefore, in the tabernacle, you see, huh? The tabernacle was completely covered with a white linen cloth. Uh, you see, the coat. Uh, you can't enter the coat. Uh, you see, because it's covered with a white linen cloth. You need to come through the gate only. So, that is wall of faith. You need to go into the wall of faith. Uh, and that is how by Jesus Christ. So, the first step is that believe you are a sinner. And that uh, the sins are cleansed only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. What is the second dipping? 
Now, second being is the word of God. You see, as uh, he begins to believe in Jesus and trust that Jesus died for his sin, personally for his sin, and uh, he begins to, uh, you see, show interest uh, in uh, God's words uh, because Jesus has died. Uh, God has made so much of plan for us. What is the plan? He'll see and search more and more from the Bible to understand the mind of God. That is the second step. Therefore, we read in the Bible that, uh, you see, the people in Berea, they were also like that. Uh, they did not just uh, bluntly receive whatever was sold to them, but they checked in the scriptures. Uh, what does the Bible say? Let us read Acts 17.11. Acts 17.11. <clears throat> uh, Muna, sister, can you read? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with the, with all readiness of mind and searched the scripture daily whether those things were so. Very good, sir. See, so they received the word of God, but uh, they went to the house and checked uh, in the scriptures whether it was so. This is the curiosity. This is the interest uh, a Christian should have. You see, need to understand zeal to understand more and more about God. What does the Bible say? You see, God desires, you see, knowledge uh, more than the burnt offering. Osea 6, chapter 6 verse. See, and uh, Jesus himself uh, had this knowledge about God. Let us read Isaiah 53, 11 and one more brother can read 2 Peter 1, 5. Uh, Anil brother, you can read Isaiah 53, 11. Uh, Romy sister, you can read 2 Peter 1, 5. He shall see of the travel of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Ah, by his knowledge, God's knowledge shall my righteous servant many. So knowledge is important. You see, we may believe, uh, uh, we may have so much of uh, faith, uh, but uh, if that faith is not accompanied properly with the knowledge, it's of no use. The people of Israel had uh, zeal, interest, so much of uh, love for the Lord, but they did not uh, have the zeal properly tuned as per the knowledge. So when Jesus came, what happened? They rejected Jesus Christ. Read the Second Peter 1.5. Romish, sir. And beside this, giving all uh, diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue knowledge. See, it tells, uh, add to your faith, virtue, goodness. Goodness, knowledge. So, knowledge is very, very important. Therefore, you see, a person at the se second step shows interest in the word of God, attends the classes, uh, studies the more word of God, takes the notes, goes through the notes, you see, and tries to understand what does the Bible say. If there's any questions, he begins to seek answers for it and makes notes of it also. And not only one, he tries to witness to others about God's words. So that is the second step. What is the third step? Third step is sin. You see, giving of sin. You see, now what does it mean by sin? All things which are uh, unrighteous, which God doesn't like, it is considered sin. You see, some people, they don't even have knowledge about sin. They think that uh, some things are very correct as per their uh, understanding. You see, like for uh, example, so some people are now addicted to mobile. Huh? They continuously keep on seeing the mobile, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, keep on scrolling from morning till evening. Or else, uh, some people, they watch the uh, match. You see, the World Cup, no? Season. Keep on watching TV or watching cinema. Still, uh, some of the people, they are very fond of uh, going around. Huh? Keep on going to shopping malls. Huh? You see, even they don't buy means uh, keep on just uh, roaming about. Uh, just uh, wasting uh, precious time. Still, some people are very fond of eating. You want this particular food only. Keep on eating glutinous. You see, these things are the things which Satan has 
you see, put in this world to deceive mankind. Sin. So, a Christian at the second step, as he begins to understand more and more of God's words, he begins to cleanse himself. You see, what did Jesus say? If your right hand, you see, sins, better cut it off than going to, you see, huh? going to, you see, uh, what do you say? Uh, hellfire, that's the second death uh, with both your hands. Uh, you say, better cut it off uh, and uh, go with one hand to eternal life. Uh, so, when Jesus uh, himself told, it is better to cut off our hands itself means whatever might be very close for us. If it is against God's will, it is our duty to cut it off. Uh, you see, therefore, the brethren, huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? Bible says, no, to depart from all these things. Read 2 Timothy 2.19. 2 Timothy 2.19. Surita Aster, can you read 2 Timothy 2.19? 2 okay. Amar brother, you are there? Can you read 2 Timothy 2.19? Okay. <clears throat> Second Timothy 219. Hmm. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. So as they realize this, that these things are not pleasing to God, he quits off all these things. You see, before this, you would be telling lies, huh? small, small lies, uh, small, small things uh, uh, which are uh, under the carpet. Uh, but now, if conscience starts to work and begins to cleanse himself, that is the third one. The fourth one, fourth one is what? Uh, fourth one is consecration, dedicating himself to God. This is the way. A place that where our Jesus began his race. You see? Huh? What does the Bible say? Apostle Paul says, no? I beseech you, brethren, you see, by the mercies of God, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. We studied about this one in the church. You see, who is a Christian? Not one who has a faith, not one who believes in Jesus, but one who follows the footsteps of Jesus. Sacrifice. Sacrifice means what? It should cause us some trouble. It should cause us some pain. You see, it should cost us something. That is called a sacrifice. You see, let us read Romans 12, 1 and Matthew 16, 24. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read Romans 12, 1? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ah, which is your reasonable service. Offering, doing sacrifice to God is not some great thing we are doing. Very, very reasonable, you see, service. If this reasonable service only is nobody is doing, me. very difficult. So consecration is very important. What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do? Read Matthew 16, 24. Matthew 16, 24. Munna, sister, can you read? Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mm. If any man wants to be my disciple. Deny himself, first of all. You see, that's the first thing. Sacrifice yourself. Take up the cross. Take up responsibility for Christ's sake. Take risk. You see, spend. Be spent in the Lord's way. Follow his footsteps. You see, that is the reason. Then, you see, consecration. That is the time that a person becomes a new creature. Okay? So, fourth step he wants to dedicate his life to the Lord. But uh, fifth step, what? Uh, 
Fourth step, he says, Lord, here I come. I offer my body as a sacrifice. He says, everything he says in the fourth step. But the fifth step, he actually tries to walk his talk. <laughs> you see, walking our talk is very difficult, no? You see? But uh, this is very, very important step. Uh. You see? Huh? Very, very important step. Uh. You see, the fifth step, very, very important. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus, practically. You see? What does the Bible say? Read First John 2, 6. Joel Buddha, read brother. Jo First John 2, 6. He said, he that said he abided in him or himself also, so talk, so to talk even as he walk. Mm, you see, we should walk even as he walked. That means what? As Jesus lived, your life also should be like Jesus. This is the main aim. What did the Apostle Paul say? You see, he eagerly travelled in pain so that Christ may be found. He also told in one more place that uh, it is no more I that live with, uh, but Jesus uh, lives in me. Read Galatians 2.20 and Galatians 4.19. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read Galatians 2.20? Hmm. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, I am crucified with Christ. Are we really crucified with Christ? Are we really dead in Christ? Nevertheless, it is not that I live, but Christ that is living in me. Our life should be lived. So practically things are to be like Christ, to walk like Christ, you see, behave like Christ. Read Galatians 4.19. Gopal brother, can you read Galatians 4.19? My little children, of whom I travel in birth again un until Christ be formed in you. See, until Christ be formed in you. I travel in pain. You see, that means so much laboring. Uh, you see, so practically, he will try to walk uh, his talk. Uh. You see, dear brethren, I'll show you, I'll tell you a difference between, uh, you see, a, a, a good uh, a person and the righteous person. You see? A righteous person is a law-abiding person who abides uh, rules, regulations, everything. Very strict person, very neat person, very clean person. You see, very you follows the principles, everything. You see, he's a very uh, good person. But good person goes beyond that one. See, a righteous person, if he had taken a loan from the righteous person, you see, he's got entire rights to go to the court and sue him if... Uh, Anybody is defaulter if anybody doesn't make the payment. You see? So, that is a righteous person. You see? Uh, we see in the Bible that uh, a creator uh, was supposed to uh, receive so much of money when uh, somebody doesn't give. You see, he goes to the court and removes his uh, clothes and uh, tries to uh, squeeze out whatever is possible from uh, him. So, that is a righteous person. That is a law abiding mm -hmm. So, whatever Thomas was agreed, so you would uh, follow. But, who is uh, a good person? A good person is somewhat better. That means, if he is not able to pay the money, if he requests, sir, I am not able to please forgive me, I am not able to give it, then that uh, good person will let him go. That is the difference between a righteous person and a good person. You see, just uh, being righteous is not sufficient. So being a good person is very important. Let us read one verse in Bible. Uh, Romans 5. <clears throat> Romans 5, 7. Can somebody read? Romans 5, 7. Okay, Joel brother, can you read Romans 4? Okay, brother. I'll... Uh, Romans 5, 7. Ah. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet. Preventure for a good man some will even dare 
to die. So what does it mean? See, it says, for a good man, somebody will dare to die. Pa. Somebody might come to die. But for a righteous person, rarely nobody might come also. Okay? It is like uh, telling, uh, you see, in case of emergency, uh, blood is required. Uh, if uh, that person who is in danger is a good person, somebody will come at least help. But if he is a very law-abiding, very strict uh, following person, who will come? Nobody will come. But uh, Jesus died for us when we were bad. That's what Apostle Paul is giving the comparison. So here the difference is between the righteous person and the good person. You see, so being a righteous person is not sufficient. Be good. Good person means what? You see, sacrifice. Lend yourself. Be spent in the Lord. That is what, you see, the fifth step matters. See, and the past four steps, a Christian would have had a lot of aims, ambitions to study well, to become a great person, earn very good salary, very good job, have house, a lot of money, everything, very beautiful wife, everything he would have had. But that is in the first step, you see. He had told he will offer sacrifice. But at the fifth step, he will think, will put a question, will think whether it is bringing glory to God. Is it really bringing glory to God? What I am doing all these things, is it really denying myself for the Lord? Is it really carrying the cross? Dear brethren, that is the fifth step. Walking practically in our consecrated walk of life. Okay. Now, sixth step. Still now, what has not happened? Leprosy is not cured. Leprosy is still there. Above all things, you see, the sixth step is very, very important. Because without the sixth, seventh cannot be achieved at all. What is that one? That is love. Development of love. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. The first name of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love. Galatians 5.22. You see, love is fulfilling of the entire law. Romans 13.10. It says now, love worketh no ill to the neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. God has not given us any law. But even then, even God has not given us the law. If we love each other, it is like keeping the law. Then. So in this love, there are three types of love. First is a filial love, affectionate love. You see, Eros love, a bodily love. Agape love is a selfless love. Now, what is a filial love? Affectionate love. The love which we have for our material things. Huh? Like for example, a car. Oh, I love my car. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so wonderful. See, the material things. Huh? You see, the filial love. This one, everybody has it in the world. Eros love means bodily, physical love. You see, uh, I love my wife. You see, uh, my wife loves me. So it's uh, what? Uh, Yara's love. But uh, agape love is selfless love. It is unselfish love. This is the love God showed upon us. Uh, read Romans 5th chapter. 6th <clears throat> verse. Ah, read with them, we were, were yet without strength in due time Christ died for, for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Christ died for the ungodly, not godly person. Read verse 8, brother. Huh? Verse 8, brother. Mm. But God commanded his love to, towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Huh? Christ died for us. When we were yet sinners, will you die for a sinner? Will you go and give your blood for a culprit who is in the central jail? No, nobody would come forward. You see, nobody would come forward and fight his case also. You see, that is what is the love which Bible says. And about the love, the Bible is given in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. You see, the Bible says about love. In very detailed matter in 1st Corinthians 13 chapter. So let us read this 13 chapter one by one and go. Okay. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read 1st Corinthians 13 chapter one by one? 
1 to 8 from verses okay. 1 to 8 slowly okay brother do i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love i am become a sounding brass or a thinking symbol ah see speaking tongues huh? tongues means what do you are speaking tongues huh? i'll tell you what is the meaning of tongues in the coming days you see if i speak in various languages sir you see i may be having a talent to speak in five six languages but uh, don't have lo huh? love if love is not the motive behind your uh, speaking in various languages it is uh, just a sounding brass a tinkling cymbal in the temple they put down uh, in your nepal himalaya places and all uh, the bells will be there not ting 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 uh, it will keep on ringing it doesn't know why it is ringing Simply, if the wind blows, it will start ringing. They usually put it in the uh, huh? bell for the cat or for the cow. You see, it doesn't know why it rings uh, without meaning. Uh. So, love should be our base, the foundation. Next, continue with that. Huh? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. I am nothing. So, though I have a gift of prophecy, what do you gift of prophecy means? Sir? You see, I can decode all the prophecies in the Bible. Each and every prophecy can be intricately, detailedly, understand, clearly explained, so that everybody will understand. Understand all mysteries. You see, all knowledge and our faith to move mountains. How much faith you need to have to move mountains? Less the small mustard seed. The faith as a mustard seed. But uh, if love is not there, what is the use? So you should have faith. Uh, but that faith should be motivated by love. Unless you are not motivated by love, even if you have faith, even if you have knowledge, it is of no use. Continue with the next. Uh. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be born, and have not charity or love, it profit me nothing. Ah, you see, though I give my goods to feed to the poor, I'll donate, I'll sacrifice, I'll give so much of money to the poor. You see, so many people do know when some festival comes, uh, Christmas comes, they give food for the poor. I'll I will give thousand. Oh, you please feed thousand people. How many days? Only one day, Christmas day. Huh? What type of food? Very cheap food. Please prepare and come. You see, they give, no? Huh? Though I give all my goods to poor. Huh? On the Christmas day, you know what they do? In the churches, they bring all the clothes and give to, gift to the poor. What type of clothes? Huh? All old clothes, huh? used clothes. Neatly, I need to pack it, cleanly pack it and give it as a gift. Poor clothes, huh? old clothes. Huh? If somebody gives that one, Will we take it? Is it love? Even if I give my goods, you see, to feed the poor, you see, no use. Though I give my body to be burned, I'll die as a martyr. So many people, they died as a martyr in the dark ages. Why the church is not complete? Because they would have died for ego and pride. Some people have so much of ego and pride, they won't let their, uh, uh, you see, enemies to conquer them. They will stand erect. They think that they are standing for God. But inside, what is the motive? God sees that one. No. Standing for pride, standing for ego, just to show that you are correct. No. All your faith on the Lord and standing for the truth should be of, out of love for the Lord. Out of love for this truth. Next brother, continue. Huh? Love suffereth long and is here, kind. Love. Here it tells the definition. What is the meaning of love? How can we identify love? You see, generally, Apostle Paul doesn't explain if you have love, this will be, that will be. But he says the characters of love. He says, huh? love suffers long and is kind. Mm -hmm. Suffers long. You know, suffering long means long suffering not impatient you see 
lot of patience. Uh, you see, uh, there was a person, a great philosopher nam, named as Socrates. He was a very, very calm person. And uh, he had a wife. And she used to always shout at him. And uh, even then, he used to be very calm. One day, what happened? Uh, she began to scold him very heavily. But even then, he was simply, silently sitting and, uh, you see, meditating. Then, she got so fed up that she bought a bucket of water and poured upon him. Immediately, you know, Socrates reacted, saying, Till now it was thundering, but now it has started to rain. You see, charity suffers long. Yeah? Long patience. Then, next, charity envieth not. You see, it doesn't have that uh, ego, envy. You see, you see, envy, enmity, enmity. No. You see, there were two neighbors who were living uh, next to each other, but they were deadly enemy. One person did not like the other person, other person did not like the other person. If uh, one person bought a car, you other person used to bring two cars. You see, a lot of competition, you see, between them. And, uh, you see, uh, one of them prayed to the Lord. And Lord appeared to him and said, Oh, my son, I am very much pleased with you, your uh, dedication. You please tell me what you want. But God told, but before... I give you your wish. Think. Whatever you ask, whatever you get, the double will be given to your enemy, your neighbor. Then he was sure totally shocked to him. Sir, what is this? God is telling me. Sir. He told God, God give me one day time. So that day and all, he did not sleep at all. Thinking, 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 what to do? What to do? Yo, if I ask one kg gold, my enemy will get two kg gold. If I ask one big bungalow, you will get two bungalows. Chha, whatever I ask, you will get double now. Then he thought and thought and thought and thought. Morning, the Lord came. Lord asked, my son, what did you decide? You know, what did that person tell? The person said, Lord, please pluck out my one eye. Please pluck out my one eye. That means what? If I lose one eye, my neighbor, my enemy will lose two eyes. This is enemy. This is enmity. This is envy. You see, love doesn't envy. Then, love wanted not itself. What do you mean by wanted not itself? You see, Always putting yourself forward. Not always. I, I, me, me, me. Uh, I like that. I am like that. I am like this one. I did this one. I did that one. It is only because of me. No, 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 no. I put stop. I throw that eye in the dustbin. Lucifer was the one who said, I, 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 I will be like the most I. You see, I will sit up on the, you see, north. I, I, God removed him because of pride. That is pride. You see, never put yourself forward. You see, let it be any situation. You see, other brethren should be given the opportunities. You see, that is not putting yourself forward. Not telling about uh, self. You see, it doesn't uh, keep on boasting about self. You see, I am so, I am like this, I did that one, I did this one, it's all because of me. No, no, no. It's all because of the Lord. You see, when Jesus came to Jerusalem, he came upon a donkey. You see, the Bible says that nobody sat upon that, uh, you see, cult of an ass. And uh, usually, uh, if uh, somebody sits on a donkey, uh, do you think it will come straightly, silently, without making any problem? Just try it in your house or in your place if you have any horse. If nobody sat on the horse or a donkey, if you just go and touch it, it will start, uh, you see, making trouble. Nobody can sit it also. And moreover, when Jesus said, calmly, silently, it entered Jerusalem. How? How was it possible? Because everybody welcomed Jesus Christ by putting cloths, you see. They put white cloths and palm branches and singing songs, singing praises to God. 
nobody this uh, did this one to donkey ever in their life they used to put all the clothes on the donkey they used to put it on the road but today jesus is sitting every clothes on the road welcoming it to oh, this uh, donkey was totally surprised oh, oh this is all because of me donkey thought now you tell me why did the people of uh, israel welcome donkey did they welcome the donkey or did they welcome the lord they welcome the lord not the donkey donkey thought huh? you see donkey is important no 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 donkey is not important donkey is important until the lord is on the donkey we are the donkey you see we are not important until our lord jesus is there in us we are welcomed or else there is no value so we should not glory at all that is what it says you see it never wants itself it is not puffed up puffed up means what pride ego you see puffing up you see which is the frog Oh, puffs up. It is very small. But imagine if somebody comes to attack it, it bulges it like this. So, we should not show what we don't have. Whatever we have, we should be happy in that one. That is what the Lord says. Suppose Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Very rich family. But he was so simple person, he was ready to weave the tent for the Lord's sake. You see, is not puffed up never did he mention about his family in the bible you see and boasted that i am such a person no oh, i am this one i am very great but today i am treated like this no you see the brethren he suffered so many things without food without shelter without clothes the tension about the churches the false brethren everything he was not puffed up that is love next brother continue brother ha huh? Okay. Don't behave itself unseemly. Seek ah. it not your own. Is not easily provoked. Thank you for that. So, does not behave unseemly. That means what? Misbehaving. You see? Just because uh, we are brothers and sisters doesn't mean that uh, you just come to the home and open the door wide open. Oh, brother, this is your house. What is there in your house? Let me see. Let me go to the nook and corner. Search everything in your house. No. No. You see, discipline should be maintained. Though we are brothers and sisters, you see, that respect, you see, should be there. Doesn't behave yourself whichever way you want. You see, seek it not our own. Always doesn't try to implement one plan, one purposes. Always try to do only the way somebody thinks. You see, what does the Bible say? You see, give preference one to another. You see, always be, you see, eager to respect each other. Romans 12 chapter says, no. you see, honor to them that give you honor. You see, that should be there. It is not easily provoked. Not uh, easily behave, misbehaves. You see, not easily uh, short tempered. You see, and thinketh no evil. Main point. Never imagine evil imaginations, wrong, wrong things, which is not there at all. Simply imagine things which are irrelevant, you see, no evil schemes, you see. Today, you know, there's so much of war in Israel and Gaza. Why? Thinking evil. They were all living peacefully, simply unnecessary thought evil. What happened? Completely, everything got spoiled. They could have lived peacefully. Why? Love is lacking now. Next, Buddha, continue. Huh? Rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. See? Doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Rejoice in the truth. Oh, just my pastor. Oh, just my pastor tells me whatever things. Huh? I'll believe it. Why? Even though it doesn't uh, there in the Bible, it's not there in the Bible. I believe it. Why? Because my pastor told that. That's what the Bible says. No, no. Even if a pastor is preaching iniquity, the things which are not there in the Bible, it should not be encouraged at all. 
it rejoices only in the truth you see truth is truth false is false let it be anybody you see that's what the thessalonica brethren did the berean people did the berean people began to search everything from the scriptures they rejoiced in the truth you see then brother continue ha beareth all things believeth all things openeth all things endureth all things ha ah, it believes all things in the bible it bears all things all trials all sufferings it bears hopes all things hopes that everything works out for good he endures all things sir. you see there should be patience endurance some things sometimes what we expect it doesn't work out we should never lose the, our temper you see never lose our mind never lose our aim in christ endure bear all things then charity never fails you see this type of love never fails you see whatever might be it may fail the brother but this fail this love is unfailing love this is the last step each and every christian should aim this is not impossible this is possible this our lord did in his life and show to us so similarly we can definitely do it but uh, we need to work it out that's all simply we need to let our ego go first thing you see then automatically all these characters will develop in us now let us fit this verses to jesus and see whether jesus was really suitable for this character like for example we'll read from verse 4 uh verse 4 to verse 8 instead of that word charity we will put christ you see i will put jesus and read okay can somebody read uh but gopal or brashish as you know how to read this verses i think uh, you you both of any of you would be comfortable verse 4 to verse 8 first corinthians uh, gopal please go on first corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8 Okay, brother. Instead of with that word charity, you put Jesus and read, brother. And Jesus, brother. Ah. Uh, okay, brother. Uh, Jesus suffereth long, mm. and is kind. Jesus envieth not. Jesus wanted not itself. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Uh, in is not easily provoked. Think it no evil, rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hoped all things, endureth all things. And Jesus never faileth, fe but uh, Jesus never fails. How aptly, how beautifully this verse is fit to Jesus. No, you see. Jesus suffers long. Jesus is kind. Jesus envieth not. Jesus. Uh, wanted not uh, himself uh, jesus is not puffed up uh, jesus doesn't behave unseemingly jesus doesn't seek his own jesus is not easily provoked jesus doesn't think he will jesus doesn't rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in truth jesus bears everything jesus believes everything jesus hopes everything jesus endures everything jesus never fails beautifully this verse is applied but does it apply to us let us see these verses as an image in a mirror and apply these verses to us and read okay now <clears throat> verse from 4 to 8 read by applying to ourselves brother like i suffer long you read like that brother gopal brother can you read from verse 4 to 8 okay brother i suffer at long and is kind uh, i invade not i volunteer not uh, is not puffed up uh, do uh, it not behave itself on seemingly seek it not her own is not easily provoked uh, think it no evil rejoice not in iniquity but rejoice uh, in the truth Beareth all things, bear, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, and never faileth. You see, but, I uh, never fail. You see, 
Now we should put a question whether we fail or not. We'll definitely fail. You see, I suffer long. I am kind. I envy not. I want not myself. I am not puffed up. I don't uh, behave myself unseemingly. I don't seek myself. I am not easily provoked. I don't think he will. I rejoice uh, not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. I bear all things. I believe all things. I hope all things. I endure all things. I never fail. You see? So these things, we need to put a question in our mind. Are we like that? If we are not like that, we need to work out our salvation. Abraham. This is the sixth step. Once we achieve this love, the final step is, uh, you see, the seventh step is death. Once if we die in the resurrection, God will give us a new body. A new body, much more pleasant, a beautiful body, like a child, a newborn child, in the new creation. You see, in the divine nature, in the heavenly salvation. Now Jesus was resurrected and God gave him a new body. Similarly, God will give us a crown of life. You see, Revelation 2.10, he says now, be faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Therefore, these seven steps are important. Faith, truth, seeking the truth. You see, separation from sin, consecration and walking over consecration, development of love. The last is death. Therefore, dear brethren, each and every step is important as the first step. Without the first step, we can't achieve the second, either the fourth or the fifth or the sixth. We can't directly jump in our imagination to the seventh step and try to win our crown. So all these steps are important. So let us thank Naman for giving us a wonderful example in the Bible. Or else we won't have learned so many things. Anyway, we thank the Lord for giving these wonderful words and uh, we pray that God may give us uh, strength in the coming days uh, to grow in Christ. May Lord uh, bless these words.